Hi, and welcome to Intune Training, the place to learn about Intune. Today we're going to be taking a look at a task sequence that will lay down a fresh image for us, then enroll itself into Intune with a group tag if you desire, and then do a little cleanup and eventually leave you with a machine ready to go at Ubi. I'm going to go over exactly how to set everything up. As a bit of a disclaimer, this is the very first iteration of this. And I'm sure the scripts that I provide will change and eventually use of the graph API calls within the future. To accomplish this, we need to configure a few things. First, we'll download the content we need from GitHub. All the resources are going to be linked down below to everything that I talk about today, so don't worry about any of that. First of all, we're going to download the content here. Uh, I'm actually going to just head over to the main here and download the entire zip file. Give that a good second here. We'll open this up. Let's throw this on our desktop, create a new folder. And it'd be great if I could spell. Task sequence files. Let's just throw everything in there for right now. Once we have that downloaded, the next thing that we're going to have to do is actually create an Azure app registration. And to do that, we're going to simply head over to portal.azure.com. We'll give it a second to load. Now we're going to head over into Azure Active Directory. And we're going to find App Registrations. And we're going to create a new registration. You can give this whatever name you'd like. Uh, let's do Task Sequence Registration. And we're just going to hit Register. And once this loads, we're going to head over down to API permissions. We're going to add a permission. And we're going to select the big Microsoft Graph option. And we're going to do application permission. Make sure you select application. Delegated permissions will not work for this. In the search filter here, we're going to simply type in device. And we're going to look for device management service config, and we are going to select read, write all. We're going to hit add permissions. And then we are going to do grant admin consent. And in this case, it'll say for your tenant name, so for Intune training. And we will select yes. At this point, you're going to want to also open up Notepad because there's a few things that we're going to want to write down. The first, we go to the overview tab here, is we're going to grab this application client ID. We're going to copy that paste it into our notepad file. Then we are going to go down to certificates and secrets and we're going to create a new client secret. We'll hit the little plus button here. We'll just type in a random description. In this case, I'm going to type in key and I'm going to say I want this to expire in three months. You obviously have some options here to make it expire whenever you'd like. I'm going to hit add and I'm going to copy the value. Make sure you copy the value and not the secret ID. Once we leave this screen, you will never be able to see that value again. Now that we have that, we're going to head back to the root of Azure Active Directory and we're going to head over to the overview page. We're going to copy the primary domain that appears and we're going to paste that into our sheet here. Additionally, you do have the option of creating Teams notifications, whether there was a success or failure during this entire process. In this particular case, I am going to go ahead and create that just so that everyone can see what that looks like. We're going to add a channel. And we're going to put in success slash failure as the channel name. And of course, we cannot use a slash. We're going to use a dash. And we're going to leave all the defaults here. And we're going to get that channel created. Once that's created, we'll hover over, click on the ellipses here, and we're going to go to connectors. While we wait for this to load, we are going to select incoming webhook. We're going to hit add. We'll hit add again. This can take a few seconds. Once that disappears, we're going to hover over the ellipsis again, go back to connectors. We're going to see towards the top that incoming webhook, and we're going to select configure. Now you can give it a name. We're going to give it just a really basic one here. Uh, just call it notifications. 
And you feel free to give it a, an, an image if you'd like. You don't have to do that. But in the, for this purpose, we're going to leave it at the default and just hit Create. And we'll give this a few seconds. But eventually, it's going to spit out a URL that we're going to want to copy. And we're going to copy that. We're going to paste that into our notepad file with everything else that we've got so far. And we're going to close this. And you'll also see that it says that we set up a new notification. Now with that, we are good to start changing uh, one of the scripts within the file that we downloaded. We're going to open up that task sequence files that we created on the desktop. And I'm going to edit script 2 here. Wait for ISC to open. And the very first thing is going to be our tenant, so we're going to copy that. We're going to paste it in here. Next, it's asking for the client ID, which is the first thing that we had copied. We'll paste that in here, make sure we don't have any excess spaces. And then it's going to ask for the client secret. We'll paste that in as well. Feel free to change this group tag to whatever you prefer. If you'd like, you can actually set this to just be blank. Totally up to you. In this particular case, I do like having a group tag because I want to separate these machines out with a dynamic device query later on. And you also have that location for the Teams URL. Let's grab that again. We'll copy that and paste. Now you'll notice that by default, alerts are set to false. In this case, I'm going to actually change this to true. And we're just going to save that and close. Now that we've got that changed, I'm going to actually copy my files here and make sure that I put them on a share so that we can access them later. I'm going to paste my files there. And now we're going to head into Config Manager. From here, we're going to go to Software Library, expand that application management, and select Packages. We're going to right click, create a package. Feel free to give it any name you'd like. And we are going to make sure to check off the this package contains source files. And we're going to browse out. In this case, I'm going to browse out to my site server here. Go into the old folder where I actually have everything shared out. And select that folder that we created. We'll hit OK and Next. Here, we're going to say do not create a program. And we'll select Next, Next, and Close. Next, we're going to have to actually upload this to our distribution point side of things. So I'm going to go over here, right click that package that we created and distribute the content for it. We're going to hit next. I'm going to hit add. We're going to select distribution point. Obviously, if you have a group, you can select distribution point group as well. Check that off. Hit OK. Next, next, and close. We'll give that a few seconds to actually deploy out. While that's doing its thing, we're going to pop over to the task sequence side of things. And we are going to create a new task sequence. So we'll right click create task sequence and we're going to select install an existing image package and select next. Feel free to give it any kind of name that you'd like. In this case, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. We'll select our boot image. In this case, we're going to, I'm going to select my by 64 boot image and we'll select next. We're going to browse out to the image index that we have. In this case, I've got Windows 10 Pro it should be 20 H2 and I've only got the one index there and we will select next. Here, we're going to select join a work group. Uh, we are going to just put in anything random for right now. So I'm going to actually just put in random. And we'll hit next again. You're going to want to install the configuration manager client. So make sure that you've got the correct one set up here. We'll select next. We're going to uncheck capture user settings. We're going to uncheck capture network settings. And we're going to uncheck capture Microsoft Windows settings. We're going to select next. And do not install any software updates. And we're going to leave applications blank as well. We'll select next again, next, and close. From there, we're going to open up and edit that task sequence. And there's a couple different things that we can get rid of here. We can get rid of the disabling a bit locker right away. Uh, we're going to leave in restart in Windows PE, the BIOS change to UEFI or MBR. And we're going to get rid of pre provisioning bit locker. We're going to leave apply operating system. And we're going to get rid of apply Windows settings. And we're also going to get rid of network settings and device drivers. You can add in the device drivers if you so choose, completely optional on your side of things. Um, we are going to leave the setup windows and configuration manager, and we're going to get rid of the enable bit locker at the end. From here, we're going to select add, and we're going to find run PowerShell script. Here we go. 
we're going to browse out to that package that we had referenced earlier. So that task sequence files that we created. And if you remember correctly, if we go into that folder, you'll see that the scripts are named script one, script two, and script three. Pretty straightforward. So in the script name here, I'm simply just going to type in script one dot PowerShell one. And we're going to change this to bypass. We're going to copy this and paste it in twice. So now you've got three run PowerShell script sections. The second one, we're going to change the script two. And the third one, we're going to screen, change to script three. Now, while we're talking about script three, special thanks to Pim Jacobs. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but I will link a link down into his blog down below. But script three is what will actually clean everything up for us. So you'll notice that we actually do have the step where we're going to set up Windows, uh, the, the configuration manager client. And unfortunately, we need to include that in order to actually get the hardware hash of the device. Once we have that, the third script is actually going to remove the config manager client and clean everything up for us. And that's what's going to leave us at the UB screen. Now that we have this, we can hit apply and OK. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and deploy this because I want to actually test this out. And for the collection, we're going to get our normal. This is a potential high risk deployment. We're going to hit OK. I'm going to actually uncheck high collections and we're just going to do all unknown computers. We're going to select next. Now again, be very cautious at this screen. This, you don't want to wipe your entire environments from anything. Uh, but we're going to actually just make this available. So it's not going to be required. And we're going to do only media and pixie. We'll hit next, next. All the defaults here are fine. Next again next again next and close and with that you're free to start testing obviously if you have any questions feel free to ask them down below all the links that we talked about today again will be down below as well have a great day